Welcome to the JMark Business Innovation Technology Experience. I'm Nielsen here, uh, and Kristen Dunn uh, from JMark, and we'll be having uh, Thomas Douglas here in, in just a minute. And this is the third part uh, webinar that we've done. We've done lots of webinars, but this is the third part in a series that we've done around workplace. And today we're specifically talking about how workplace has helped to has helped us at JMark um, to create and nurture a strong company culture, um, especially in this time that we've been so distributed and everybody working from home and you in front of your lockers and, and me in, <laughs> in, in my house in Texas. And, and uh, but we've been able to uh, really nurture the culture during this time. Uh, why don't we start off just by sharing some thoughts that we each have. Uh, what, you know, from your standpoint, what have you seen in the company and specifically on individuals you work with? How has workplace enhanced the, the, the culture aspect? Not, not so much the collaboration and communication, but that's all part of it, but more of the culture. Yeah, so like you mentioned, it's all kind of tied together, um, but trying to separate out the cultural piece um, with all of us working so distributed these days. Um, I know it sounds really simple, but sometimes it's the simple things that kind of help build and develop our culture. Um, the group of people that I have consistently worked with, um, it, it's something as simple as we have a chat group that we all consistently communicate in and, and, you know, people will pop in first thing in the morning in their day and, and just kind of say good morning and hey, or, or just give people kind of a heads up on what they have planned out for the day or maybe even something they could use help on. Um, but that's part of our culture too is you know, we all want to still collaborate as a team and work together and support each other the best that we can. And Workplace has definitely given us the platform to do that. Yeah, I think, you know, last week, I think it was, we all were involved in a conversation about, I think it was us, in a, about a conversation about culture. And that is such a hard thing to explain. Tom, you said it pretty well when we were talking. Could you describe, how would you describe what culture is so that we can go into the conversation of how workplace has enhanced and nurtured our culture? Yeah, I, I don't remember what I said now, but I'm happy to give it a run. Um, I, you know, I think, I think fundamentally the culture is, is the, the set of values and the agreements that an organization has about how they're going to behave and how they operate as a company. It facilitates productivity, it facilitates interaction, it facilitates uh, good behavior and bad behavior. And so I think, I think really from a fundamental perspective, it's the culture that is the foundation of how we produce promises to our clients. If we say we're going to do it, then we're going to do it. And it's our culture that helps to facilitate that because of our core values, because we hire based on those things. And then as you, as you complement that with, with workplace and, and everything that it brings to the table, it's how do we make sure that our team stays connected, that they stay uh, aligned and that they provide clarity to the outcomes that we expect. And, and it is that platform 100% that, that drives those things forward and, and uh, gives us the ability to make sure that no matter where we are in the country or in the world, that, that we can drive that alignment. Yeah, I think I think what you said that was awesome. But I think you said last week that was a little funny, actually. Is you you said describing culture is sometimes like describing love. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. in That's that exactly it's different it for everybody. <laughs> yeah, it's a hundred percent accurate. You know, when you when you ask a a child what what love is, and they may they may quickly talk about you know getting a hug from their mom, but you ask a 40 year old, 50 year old man what love is and it's a totally different story. Um, and I think culture is the same thing for sure that, that you, can't, you can't necessarily describe it and it's not always tangible, but you absolutely can feel it and you know that it's there and it's, it's a bond that exists inside of an organization. I think that's a, a great word is bond because you know, when, when we think about, you know, you hear everybody talk about culture and it's kind of a buzzword in, in leadership world and, and it's kind of used over and over again. But 
when you break it down, it's really kind of the glue, the bond that holds everybody together and pushes them towards uh, a common, common objective, a common vision. And it's through uh, the tool that we have, a tool like Workplace, that we can not, um, not make that bond, but we can enhance the already existing bond, the tools that we have, to allow uh, greater execution, greater collaboration, uh, and, and move the initiatives forward and, like you said, get things done that we, we say we're going to get done and fulfill our obligations. Yeah, absolutely. So, go ahead. Sorry. I, I was just going to say, it's not only um, alignment around that and the bond associated with it. Um, I, think it's, I think it helps to drive the behaviors. So not only where are we going, but how are we going to get there? How are we going to act? What, what is acceptable and not acceptable inside of our organization for how we're going to, to march down the road? And I think that companies that don't define that, that clarity and have those, those uh, components figured out, you know, you bring someone in who's not a culture fit, it becomes really challenging to identify why. Uh, but in our, our environment, that's not hard at all because we know how we're going to get from here to there and the behaviors that are okay. And, and the platform, to your point, just adds to it. It's fuel on the fire that, that makes that much more substantial in order to facilitate that march, if you will. Yeah, what I what I was going to say is um, there's so many different applications in, in anybody's environment anymore for collaboration and, and getting things done. But if you really think about workplace as an engagement layer between all of those, that's what it's doing. It's, it's allowing for that engagement that helps drive that culture between all of the different tools that you're using every day. Yeah, and it's so true The you know, I hadn't thought about that in that having a multitude of applications, um, you know, and this is a little bit getting in, into a different topic, but it's related to workplace and that having a multitude of applications just confuses people. It weakens that bond. When you have communication and, and collaboration happening through a multitude of applications, you have chaos and you have confusion and you don't know where to find stuff. And you don't know, it's harder to move things forward. And so in that essence, it's pretty interesting that you can think of a communication and collaboration tool as something that could nurture the bond and nurture the, the, the culture. That's and drive cool. that engagement, absolutely. It drives clarity. It's like we, we go here for this, and because of, of the access that Facebook has of 3 billion interactions a day, they, they know how people want to engage with technology, and that's what pulls people in. It's an engaging platform both from a, I like to use it because I know how to use it and it's intuitive, but it's also engaging the culture within itself to, to drive that, that collaboration and, and alignment. Okay, so uh, pretty much anybody that follows anything about leadership out there has heard the, the term uh, by Peter Drucker that culture eats strategy for breakfast. Mm -hmm. um, so as we think about, you know, we've talked about culture, culture, culture. Now, how has the experience over the last couple of months where we as a company have had to distribute ourselves and we're starting to see a little bit of a return now, but we've, we've been disconnected for a while. How has workplace allowed us to not, uh, or to act, I would venture to say that workplace has allowed us to strengthen the bond versus weaken the bond while we've been disconnected. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, when people aren't next to each other, you, you, have to, you have to rely on a tool or a capability to drive the interaction. And because it was built from the ground up to be that, that glue that, that maintains a culture across the globe, um, it, it was very natural and easy for our organization. And the reason I think that it in, in often, it, the, the, I think it's easy to say that in many ways our organization, our culture is stronger is because it's forced everyone to collaborate in the same way rather than the people who are in the office are collaborating face to face, the people who are in another office are collaborating face to face. And when we're, when we're, when we're not in the same place, we're using that, that platform. Now we don't have a choice. We're all using the platform all the time. And it's kind of like what we've seen on a, on a global scale, digital transformation has, has accelerated by two or three years and forced everybody to adopt Zoom and other mechanisms for, for engagement and alignment with their clients and, and peers. 
th the same thing happened inside of our organization. And, and because we already had workplace in place, it, it just, it, it made the bond come that much stronger. And we know from the trends and, and what's going on in the world that that, that shift to digital transformation is never gonna go back. People are gonna continue to use video in more ways that they never have. And, and the same is true in our organization. We're gonna see that engagement really high in workplace that constantly pulls the bond and that strength, that culture together more and more effectively. The thing I like about workplace and this aspect of building culture is it's so holistic mm -hmm. in the sense that um, it, 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 it can cover so many different aspects. So for example, you know, it's, it's not just a platform for video, you know, it's a platform for expressing emotions, for expressing concerns, for expressing, um, uh, you know, agreeing or disagreeing with things. And you do that in a visual manner, just like Facebook, you know, you like a post or you love a post or you uh, hate a post or, or, or something. And, you respond with gifts or you respond with messages or whatnot. And it's, it really takes this idea of a, a, a video a lot more, it makes it a lot more broad because it's, it's really holistic in the sense that it brings together everything from task lists to to do's to collaboration, to sharing files, to, uh, announcements to motivation to leadership uh, you know it's it just brings so much different uh, different connections mm -hmm. well it's it's the one place that you can go to at any point in time whether it's the middle of the night or the middle of the day and get a sense for what's going on inside the organization what what our our CRM team is working on what the service teams are working on what's going on in projects what what client uh, issues are going on that we need to make sure and be aware of what's going on on the financial aspect, you know, what, what, what challenges are the executive team uh, focused on in order to help move the company more effectively. That's all going on inside a workplace. So you can, I, I would call it like the truth center of what's going on because you have all of those capabilities of interactions. You, you don't just have to read, oh, well, I like this, I don't like this. You, you can see instantly, it's a thumbs up, it's a thumb down, it's a smiley face, it's a gift with somebody dancing. It's really easy to, to understand exactly how people feel about the things that are being accomplished and moving forward. Yeah, it's almost uh, instant feedback on, on communications, whereas if it were email, you know, there'd be 5% that would respond and there'd be yeah. another 15% that would respond a couple of days later. And there'd be another 20% that would respond in two weeks. And there'd be another 40% that just would not respond and they'd delete it. <laughs> yeah. And, and then a half of those that would hit reply all and put the wrong things in the broad message and clutter right. up everybody's inbox. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things on that note that I love about it is you can consume it as you're ready to. It's not somebody imposing something on your inbox. It's, it's you, you consume it when you need to. So our security group where we collaborate about all the changes that are happening in the industry around security, um, you get a notice that it's there. You're, you're aware of it, but, but it's not it's not like right now. I, I can read that as I'm waiting for a meeting to start or if I'm you know, sitting, sitting in a car, riding with someone else and, and just thumbing through trying to catch up on the news, I, I'm, I'm consuming the, the information around the security changes or whatever it may be as we go. So it, it really does um, facilitate the, the transition of information in, in a consumable and healthy way. The, we've shared this before and I was trying to uh, pull up the data here, um, waiting for Michelle to over here, uh, you know, we've 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 had somewhere around nine thousand chats a day um, that happen within our company, which are essentially these interactions happening, and that is really straight removed from email. You have the interactions that are happening, and these interactions are the likes, the comments, the shares, the uh, the posts, uh, replies to comments, all of these things. And I, I think I looked at the number last week and it was, uh, it was a whopping somewhere around 15,000 connections a day or something. Um, or, or maybe it was 
I'll have to wait and get the number, but it was this massive amount per day per individual um, in the sense of, you know, there's just so many people that are interacting with the platform and collaborating. And that has just been the, you know, like we've talked about the, the glue that's enhanced the, the culture of the company during this time. Yeah, I think we have to be careful and not paint a picture that that's what people are spending all of their time on throughout the day. Because of course. Because there's a massive amount of work getting done every single day. People are plowing forward. Because the platform is so simple, we, we can have all of these interactions, these information collisions, these transfers of knowledge, and it still not slow us down. You know, we, we had one of our board members say recently who compares managed service companies as in, in involved in a lot of different organizations. He said, I, I am always blown away by how much work you guys get done from interaction to interaction that he has with us. He's absolutely floored by it. And part of that is the speed at which we can move and consume information, digest information within the organization. So while we have these interactions, they're, they're fast, they're easy, and you can move on and, and get the work of the day done. Yeah, yeah that's a there's, oh, go ahead, Christian. good way of explaining Christian. it. It's like um, I talked to an, uh, a client that's actually looking at this platform right now, and, and the way they're currently communicating with their, their employees is you know, traditional ways of communication, which is like mass emails and newsletters. Think about the, the gap of time every time there's, even if it's a weekly newsletter, that's a whole week that goes by that people may be going down the wrong path for a whole week that could have been course corrected instantly through a platform like this. Like how much, how much work gets lost, even though there's people working, you know, they were working in the wrong direction because they didn't have that consistent touch like this platform provides for the alignment, like consistent alignment. And it doesn't take a lot of time versus a newsletter that I may or may not consume because it's going to take me 30 minutes to read through this newsletter. Yep. No, you're exactly right. Yeah, it's... You, no, sorry, Todd. If you compare that to the best practices in HR, you, you don't wait to an annual review to provide somebody feedback or a quarterly review. You want to provide feedback on an ongoing basis. And the same is true inside the business where people are putting their energy, where they create value, where they help the clients most effectively. That changes hour by hour, and especially in our industry. And, and so we want to make sure that we're getting that out there and it's, and it's easy to, to digest. Yeah. And, and that's really important. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. It, it, there's, you know, I've shared this before in that, you know, workplace has allowed me to consume information so much faster in other areas, you know, for like, for example, email, I, I get a lot less email, but I still get a ton of email, a ton of email, but it has allowed me to quickly scan my email and, and, and quickly see what's, what's important. And the same thing with chats, uh, you know, chats and things that go on in, in, in workplace, there's so much information that's given that you, you don't necessarily have to react on. You don't necessarily have to respond on, you know, I sent a chat uh, a little bit ago to three people on an agreement that we're working on and I wasn't expecting a reply. It was just a FYI. Whereas if that was buried in email, it may not be seen till tomorrow um, right. with everything going on. And so it's, 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 it, I don't, I can't even really explain it because it's so weird to think that email has gone down but the amount of interactions have has gone dramatically up. I mean, not just not by the same proportion. And that that uh, you know that that change in interaction has been instrumental in moving things forward and getting things done. Yeah, you, you essentially what you're describing is removing friction and adding velocity, uh, and that's that's exactly what happens as as you talk to the. The transfer of information or the distribution of information we we've removed friction and we've increased velocity so we're twice as efficient in getting information from one group of people to another and and that's exactly what we wanted to accomplish when, when we adopted it so um we were kind of talking in at a high level here uh how about we get down into some some of the tactics and obviously we're on a on a video call here and we're not uh sharing the screen but uh what are some ways that both of you what, what are the top ways that that you all have used workplace to um help enhance the culture of those you work with you know the bond of those you work with uh, 
I'm happy to go. Kristen, you wanna you wanna take a stab, or do you want you want me to go first? Go ahead. No, I'll follow yeah. up. Hey, well, I think I think the the first in in most effective way, I think it's important to think about how work gets done in an organization. So so you do work in in on an individual basis. You do work as a as a group or as a team, and then you do work as a division or a department. And, and when, when you're leading a team or a division or a department, one of the most important things is to have vision into everything that's going on to make sure that the team not only is aligned, but they're working on the things that are most important. So as a part of this, uh, when, especially when we're, when we're not in the same building where you would traditionally maybe come together and have a daily stand up or, or something like that, we, we do uh, you know, virtual daily standups where we're sharing that kind of information in a team environment. And I, I quickly can, can absorb everything that's going on with a particular team, make sure that the energy is, is focused in the right areas. And if somebody is stuck or has an impediment as it relates to something, then as a leader of a team, I can quickly jump in and say, oh, I, I know how to solve that problem. Let me, let me, you know, pull that impediment away from you so that you can keep accelerating down the road. So for me, leading the organization, knowing as fast as we go, it, it's, it's critical that I know that, that we're always headed in the right directions with energy being placed in the areas that our clients need us to put it in most effectively. And, and it's that alignment that, that I get to see by taking a peek into the different teams of the organization and have vision into the, to the different areas and seeing the responses. How quickly are we solving problems or removing those impediments for people? Uh, talks and speaks a lot to the velocity in which we're, we're able to move for our clients and so uh, and for the team themselves. Uh, so one of my favorite aspects is is being able to see and solve quick, fast, and in a hurry. So at, at my level where I'm at as far as communicating internally, um, I need to be able to communicate really quickly with a lot of different people at JMark. I, I, I am set within a team, but historically for me to accomplish my goals, I need to be able to communicate with just about every other department in JMark very quickly. Um, so this does do that. That's more on the work side. But if it's always just about work, which I understand culture, the piece, one piece of it we talked about is how we're accomplishing things as a company, how we're getting things done. But there's that feeling side of it too that we kind of talked about. And so this platform, especially in the dispersed uh, scenario that we're working in today, still allows for that human connectivity too. Like rather than me just blasting someone with an email, I need XYZ or FYI, blah, blah, blah. This gives that human touch to it a little bit. And I know it sounds cheesy, but something as small as using emojis that shows just a little bit more than just context. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it adds that additional layer of human to communications. It's not just, let me puke a bunch of information on you. Let's work on this together. And, and then it's, it's more human. I know that sounds odd, but it, it does. It adds that feeling to it that an email just doesn't deliver. Yeah, I don't think it sounds odd at all. If you think about how we as a society interact today, you know, some of my friends that I was in the Navy with, I still see posts on a daily basis from them, you know, on, on you know, hundreds of miles away. And, and, and that, that is how our society as a whole now interacts. And so yeah. it doesn't sound odd to me. It's taking the, the consumer consumerization of IT and the consumerization of socialization and is bringing it into the workplace. So you're, you're consuming and socializing with your peers the same way that you do with family and friends around the world. Yeah. So to me, it enhances the experience substantially. That's a great yeah. thing that it, it enhances it all the way from, like I said, something as simple as an emoji to a GIF or maybe I want to start a video chat and talk to this person face to face or maybe I just want to share something with the rest of the company, I can do that through a live video. This mm -hmm. platform gives you so many different layers of that human touch that you just don't get through a lot of the traditional methods. Yeah, Kristen, you, you stole my, my, uh, <laughs> my, my strategy there. But being that I'm 
permanently remote, uh, you know, and many hundreds of miles away from the office. What it's done for me is exactly what you said, because before workplace, there was, it was email, you know, email or phone calls. And when you have massive numbers of emails and you can pretty much just communicate via email in a text format, sure, you could go online and find a meme or probably enter some code in to add an emoji, but it's just, it piles into a backlog that just sits there and sits there and sits there. Whereas what, what it's allowed me to do uh, being remote is it's allowed me to connect to people um, on a much broader scale because I can say something and add a little smiley face or add an emoji and they understand my context instantly without, without me having to explain it or double think it. I mean, it goes back to the old days of sending an email and a few minutes afterwards going, oh, wait a minute, did, should I have said that or should I have changed that a little bit and not being able to go back and, and, and do that. Whereas with chat, it's instantaneous and you can, you can type something out and insert, insert some emoji or meme or, or, or just, Hey, I, what I meant to say was blah, blah, blah. And sometimes I'm like going so fast that I'll, I'll type something out and my, and I'll miss a few characters and I'm, my head's going faster than my fingers. And then, and then I see what I wrote and I'm like, okay, slow down. This is what I meant. <laughs> and then, just, but it just allows you to, to have this instantaneous, um, you know, layered uh, communication method where people really understand you and they understand what you're doing. And, and to be quite honest, a lot of people before workplace thought I was just a, uh, just a boring taskmaster. And, um, and that's not, not true. <laughs> yeah, well, I think, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it ties the, the, the human and the emotion piece to it. But I think the part that is what you're, what you're essentially articulating is that, that you're changing from a platform like email and text messages and these other platforms, and, and even a lot of the chat platforms that are out there, you're taking these things that, that people actually feel like are, are a pain in the ass. They feel like they're a slave to them. They're, they're laborious, and it's like, oh, it's this task that I have to go through and do in order to, you know, check the boxes. And you're moving to a platform that's engaging and, and fun and, and, it's, and it's helping you to get things done in a very positive way without it seeming like a negative task. And I think that that's, that's really, that what you're describing is the impact of having a good platform that facilitates that because you, you feel good, you, you're happy, you're, you're driving those, those interactions and those collaboration points in a way that, that is fun and engaging rather than, oh my gosh, I've got another 200 emails to get through before I can go to bed. Um, and, and I know we've all been there. Yeah, I remember back in the day when, way before I was with Jmark, when I had a BlackBerry, if that dates, dates me any, anyway. Yeah, um, yeah. And, <laughs> and I remember when it's sitting in my, or was in my pocket and it would vibrate and ding, certain ding. And my heart, my anxiety would just go up because it's like, oh, another email. And it's like, ding, ding, ding. And it's usually ding, 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 ding. And, and so and it's like, ah, oh, more stuff I have to deal with. But now when you get a chat, it, it, you know it's going to be over fairly quickly. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, okay, a chat. Let me, let me take care of it and get back on with my thing. And then, like, like you said, Kristen, I mean, there's times when, you're chatting on something and you're like, okay, we, we need to move this to a different medium because we are, uh, this is getting into too many levels uh, complicated and you hit, you hit a button and bam, there they are just like we are now on a, on a video call and you're talking through the, the problem and right. you're still within the same solution. Or even, uh, which is not uncommon, you, you hit that button and you're in the car and you take, you take a, an audio call through the platform. So one person's in their office at their desk talking to their computer while I'm driving down the road listening on an earpiece um, and it works just the same. It works very well. I've done that many times where I've got a chat. I, I transfer to the vehicle to, to hit the road for whatever reason and continue the conversation and just instantly switch the platform. Yeah, it's very versatile. So. I mean, depending on whatever your role is within 
your company is versatile enough to accommodate all of the different ways that people need to function. If you're someone who has to be mobile consistently, it, it can run on your phone. You can take calls, video calls, you can chat, you can check your feed just like you would on a normal Facebook platform. It's, it's nice. It's pretty slick. Um, the other piece with our culture, um, I just, I can't say enough about how well this helps new people come into the organization and get a really good picture of what our culture is much faster than they ever could through email or, or other, other methods just, mm -hmm. and it, and the, the ease that they have to go back and look at historical things too, not just here's all the new stuff, but all of the things that have helped create the company and build that culture, they have access to pretty easy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Good. Dad. You, uh, I think we should talk about that, but you reminded me of it, it, what went through my mind. You reminded me of something we talked about several weeks ago, and that was we were we were talking about meeting customers where they are, mm. and what you said kind of twisted that a little bit in my mind to meeting employees where they are, and there and what you said about mobile was so important because I can go to the doctor's office, I can go to the you know, I can do whatever and I can still be connected with the, the, the vital things that I have to do without having to scroll through a bunch of emails and respond in a, in a manner that's totally different than a quick chat than expected. And there are times when, maybe I shouldn't say this, but there are times when at uh, 4.30 or 4.45, when I've had solid meetings all day long and I am dead tired I will take my phone and go lay down on the floor and scroll through all my workplace notifications and scroll through my chats and talk to people and answer them and click the chat button and, and do a video call real quick. And I'll be, I might be on the floor or something talking to Dax and <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll talk through something. But I think it's the idea of, of, of the, uh, I don't know, I like that idea of meeting employees where they are, just like you meeting your customers where they are because energy levels flow and, you know, there's stress levels and, and, and everything happens. And the, um, the, the way that you can communicate with, with workplace and have it mobile, have it on your computer, just, you know, enhances, enhances that ability to meet people where they are. Well, so, I mean, oh, go ahead. Kind of hit on that too, without directly saying it. I mean, every, Every company is always very, very uh, top of mind about what their brand is in the market space, but you also have an internal brand and part of that is your culture. I mean, mm -hmm. that's really, and, and you know, the faster you grow, the, the harder it is to maintain exactly what you want the culture to be. But my, when people come in and they can see the historical, uh, you know, dialogue of the organization, how they solve problems, how they communicated. Um, you know, the, the, the company meetings, the, the get togethers, we call them rallies inside of our organization where we're getting together and we're celebrating people and wins and, and you know, communicating logistics and challenges and everything that happens in a business. We're, we're pushing this information into a single platform and people can go back and, and look at those archives and pull them forward to make sure that they know and, and what to expect moving forward. And so it really does drive that, that interaction, meeting people where they are and that mobile first mentality. You know, when I, when I got to go out to Facebook and meet with the, the workplace team and they were talking to me about you know, their goals as an organization, it's that mobile first mentality. They're developing and they're pushing mobility first to keep people connected no matter where they are, but yet respecting the HR requirements of, of different organizations and verticals and, and, and em, employment types and, and engagement types all the way around. And so it's got the flexibility to, to handle all of those diverse applications and still provide great value that people get engaged in and, and want to interact with. And I think that's a that's another thing that I hadn't thought about. You know, I can go on vacation or take a few days off and, you know, when I have time, I can open up Workplace and listen on my phone to a rally that we had or listen to a stand-up that my team had. Um, while I'm driving or something, and it just keeps me connected, 
And whereas before, if, you know, it's, can I get, can I get a recording of the, of the meeting? And then you're being bounced around to different people and trying to figure out who has the recording. It's like, ah, I forgot to record it in the cloud. It's on so-and-so's computer and, you know, it's yeah. a, a different thing. So it's, it's, it's a lot of, you know, like we're talking about uh, meeting employees where they are. But I do want to, I do want to talk about this, this idea of um, how easy it is to bring on uh, to onboard people into workplace because it's so easy and comfortable because I want to, I want to dispel the myth that workplace is like Facebook because we've rolled this out and had that question and concern and that, Oh, we're just rolling out a uh, internal Facebook in our organization. And that is not true in any way, shape or form. So how would you describe the differences between workplace and Facebook um, and and that allows people to uh, to be familiar with it so easily. Yeah, well, it, it, great question, and and I get those questions all the time. And it's important to 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 delineate the two, not only just from the the operational piece of it, but also from a security perspective of it. I mean, information is stored. You know, they the workplace team goes through the accreditation, the IEEE, the SOC two, the SOC three. Uh, the data center management, all of those things. So it's a it's a separate set of activities to manage and meet compliance requirements as it relates to the platform itself. And so, um, so you're exactly right. When it comes to interacting, there, the benefit of of what Facebook brings to the table is to know how people want to engage with the platform, what their preferences are, how they want their thumb to be on the phone, uh, how they how they want to consume, how easy it is to like and engage people. They're they're bringing the best of breed to the table as it relates to that. And then they're changing the interaction so that they're filtering information based on the things that are relevant to you. And that centers around groups. So in organizations, you get work done in teams and in workplace, there are groups that are centered around teams. Um, now the biggest, the biggest challenge that oftentimes exists within an organization is when you take a piece of work and you hand it from one team to another. So from marketing to sales, from sales to service, from service to billing. And, and those interactions oftentimes, oftentimes have friction in them. So if you know you need to solve that, you can create a group that crosses teams and, and allow the, the, the larger organization or a portion of that, the larger group to, to interact and, and, and solve problems and move things forward. So I, I would describe it mostly as you're not, it's not this public format where you're, anybody who posts anything is something that you're forced to consume. That's, that's absolutely not the case. You can follow or not follow people based on your preferences. So the CEO, certain leaders in the organization, if you want to follow them or if you want to follow somebody who always posts fun jokes or, or something along those lines, those are your preferences. But, but more importantly to, the, to that is you're filtering the information based on the groups that you interact. So the all company group, the department and your team and maybe a, a cross functional team. So it narrows it to the things that are relevant. And Facebook's algorithms are, are pretty phenomenal in making sure that what's important gets surfaced to you so that you can interact with it appropriately. Yeah, and I'll add to that. Um, you know, it, it's, it's strange that when you look at workplace, it doesn't look anything like Facebook, mm -hmm. but the everybody understands likes and everybody understands loves and smiley faces and angry faces and everybody understands sharing and everybody understands commenting and um, and that's what makes it so easy but it's done in a what's different with Facebook is it's done in a controlled manner right. you know there are we as a company can control what is and isn't put into the system, you know, through policies and through, uh, through moderators, you can have moderators in groups. Um, there can be approval for different things. You can, you can have different permissions for different types of, uh, of groups and workplace and for doing different things. And so it's, it's familiar in the sense of this, the, the, the look, you know, the, what, what, what you click on and how you interact is easy for people to, to get quickly without, a, without much training, but it's totally different in, in, the, in the distraction sense. I don't see workplace as a distraction in any way, shape, or form. I see it as something that augments my knowledge and augments the communications and my awareness of what's going on, whereas 
social media can often be considered a, a distraction, which is bad for business <laughs> in that sense. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I think that circles back to the, the what we were talking about earlier, how it how it, it you can you can digest more information more quickly because of the format and the structure so that you can speed up, you know, with with no ads popping up at you and, and nothing like that. I mean, it, it, you do have that control around it so that you can make things happen and get them done as quickly as possible. Yeah, it is like snack size content <laughs> rather than, you know, full meals where you may get in emails where they're, you know, this long. Look. Um, so that's the similarity. I mean, I don't want to say they're completely different, but there are similarities in the way that the platform itself functions on the way you're consuming the information, but it is an enterprise application. It is not the same thing as your social platform, which is more individualized. Like this is my Facebook. This is, this is a company Facebook where you do have an individual account, uh, but it is tied to groups and, um, you know, teams rather than specific people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think one of the biggest challenges that we have to uh, deal with as we're having conversations with people for the first time is that security piece of it mm -hmm. that, that you mentioned, Todd, and you alluded to, Kristen, because it, it is, it's got to operate as an enterprise application, and, which means you have to have controls, you have to have best practices, you have to have, you know, the expectations and, and then the ability to deal with things that are in violation of those. And all of that is built into the platform so that you can control the messages and, and whether it's you go through an approval process or you use a, an enterprise admin or an admin in the application recognize that somebody posted something that, that doesn't align with the acceptable use inside the company uh, and you can take it down. Yeah. Right. The, um, you know, as we, <clears throat> being back to culture again, uh, which is kind of the theme of our, 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 our talk today, our discussion, as, J Mark and other companies are moving back into the office. You know, is, how do you feel workplace will um, will continue to augment the culture of the organization when we are back to, you know, a mostly face and face to face type of operation? Well, I think it's been long enough that people have developed good habits for sharing information in in uh, a way i mean it's it's documented and it's and it's in there almost as a as a summary and i i don't expect that that you you'll see maybe some interactions go down uh but but in terms of the things that are getting done the priorities you know we are working very quickly as an organization in in this environment and it's because of the habits that we've developed the things that we've sorted out and is a part of being a part <clears throat> excuse me and I, I think people like that velocity. And so they're, they're going to carry that forward and continue to use it in that way. I was like, I, now that I know this stuff, I don't ever want to go back to the old stuff. I, that's, that's just not going to happen. I think it's allowed us to break certain behaviors. You know, I heard somebody talking about how when they were, before all this happened with COVID, they, you know, if they needed something, they would get up and go knock on someone's door, interrupt them, uh, and, and have a conversation. And Workplace has allowed them to kind of break that behavior and just quickly ping them, hey, are you available to, to have a discussion right now and not be the interrupter. And, and, and I agree. I think that as we uh, get back to the more, uh, the office environment, I think that there's a lot of behaviors that have, uh, for the better, uh, potentially been broken to help increase our velocity and help us to continue to communicate and collaborate in a manner that uh, allows us to, to move, adapt, and innovate at, uh, at speeds that are yeah. fast. I totally agree. I, I think it, 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 it stopped this stuff. People poking in your office? Hey, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that goes away and never comes back. I've been on video calls with you in the office and people have done that and I'm sitting here going, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, uh, so I, I do, I think it's, it's formed a lot of good habits in using technology for what it's capable of delivering in the most efficient way. That's why it's there. I mean, 
the foundation and purpose of tech is to, to do things better and, and more efficiently. And we've learned some new skills and capabilities as a part of all this, which has been great. I think you're right in the fact that it's been a long enough period of time for people to develop different habits than what they had before. Mm -hmm. um, but also a long enough period of time for people to realize that um, it's okay to not necessarily have to have that face to face where I physically get up and walk down the hall because um, they can still get that similar feel from this platform without having to leave their desk necessarily to do that. Uh, and there's that level of efficiency because I know personally I've been in face to face conversations and been like, well, I don't have that data that you're asking me for right now at my fingertips because I'm not at my desk. Whereas I can still have that same of, same type of communication with people and have that data readily at my fingertips because of the way we're the, the type of communication that we're able to have through this platform. Yeah. Well, I think it's uh, the other thing on that note is I think that it has made it a, a better, we have become a better company at remote people. You mm -hmm. know, one of the big challenges that we identified two years ago was that we needed to create an amazing remote experience. So whether somebody was working out of the office or was permanently out of the office, or if it was another office from Springfield, we had to do a better job of pulling people together in this platform has forced us and, and enabled us, I guess is the right word, to, um, to become a company without borders. It, it, it doesn't matter. So I guess another true. staying consistent with the message that we've kind of talked about throughout this conversation. Um, so the platform lets individuals, um, you know, meet where they are, mm -hmm. but it also allows us to accommodate each other in that same sense. Absolutely. Yeah. And as we, and as we do that, we're increasing the bonds, we're increasing the connections, we're increasing the, the relationship. There's greater clarity in the organization. There's greater velocity to move things forward. And, um, and, uh, you know, essentially in the end, it's a, it's a great platform. Uh, you know, it's a platform that for those listening that is not, um, you, from a cost perspective, something that can change your culture so rapidly and so quickly, um, it is probably one of the cheapest things you could, you could, you could do. I mean, it, it's, it, it's just an amazing uh, opportunity to enhance the culture of, of any organization. So if anybody is interested, uh, feel free to reach out, reach out to us uh, at jmark.com uh, or you can chat with us uh, on our Facebook page and uh, Kristen will follow up with you <laughs> and uh, start the conversation. And until next time, take care. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Have a good day. Thank you for attending this podcast. We hope it has been informative and helped convey that at JMark, we are people first and technology second. To learn more and discover additional content relevant to your business, please visit us online at jmark.com or at LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You may also call us at 844-44-JMark. Thank you for your time and we look forward to seeing you again.